And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Specs. Lots of X's in there, I have no idea why. Is it adult only? I don't think so. It's just called Specs. It's about rolling dice. It's basically Connect 4 mixed with Yahtzee. Actually, that's kind of the way they describe it. It's not really like that. It is an interesting dice tactical placement game. Is it fun? Let's find out. So here's the board for specs. Now, <laughs> what you'll be doing is you, you'll get a couple cubes to keep track of your scores. So you put one there on zero and you put one here. That moves on 100, 200, 300, or 400 tracks. You're going to be scoring points by placing cubes on this board. And you get a certain number of cubes depending on how many players are in the game. Uh, before we talk about placing cubes, I want to talk about points. Each of these colors that it shows on this board are worth a certain number of points. You can see here. Golds are worth three, silvers are eight, oranges one, reds are twelves, and so on and so forth. The way that you get points is by getting three cubes in a row. So if I get these three cubes here, I would score two uh, of these light purples, 14 plus five for the this, that would be 19 points. And this also works diagonally. So if I have this here, that would be 21 points. And then if I, once I have three and I add a fourth to that, I'll score for that. When I add a fifth, I'll score for that. Although if you get five in a row, you will get a bonus five points. You also get a bonus 25 points if you manage to make a three by three grid, which is very difficult. And I haven't seen that yet because if you get close to it, probably someone will try to block you. Now, if you manage to make two specs in a row, these are three in a row like this, I would then score for both those rows at the same time. Now the question is, how do I get these pieces out on the board? And that's by the Yahtzee method. What that means is you roll the dice and you can keep any die that you want. So I'll say, oh, I'll keep these two fives. And then I'll re-roll these and you can re-roll up to four times. There's three fives, there's four fives. Uh, okay, so I got four fives and a two. Now, with four fives and a two, there are different places that I can place on the board. And that de is determined by the bottom here. You can see that underneath all these orange rows, I need to place in that column, I need to have one of those numbers. So I have one, two, so I could place in there, but I also have to match the row. And so I go all the way over and it's one, two, and one, one. I don't have that. I got four fives and a two. Hey, well, look at this column. This column needs four fives, and this row here needs one, two. Four fives and a two, so I could place my square there. I don't have to place it there. I could place it over here in the three fives and a two spot if I wanted to, or even the two fives and a two spot, which is over farther. So you have different spots where you can place it depending on the combinations that you roll. If someone's already in a spot, you cannot replace them. You cannot go there again. If you can't find any spot on your turn, you simply discard a cube and then you just keep going. The way to get into the silver spots and the gold spots, and that's only one way to get them. You can't use the normal crisscross pattern. To get in the gold spot, you need to roll a small straight, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six. And to get into a silver spot, you need to roll a large straight, two, three, four, five, six, or um, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five. And that's basically the game. You're just trying to roll dice and get combinations that will let you place cubes on the board and score points. One thing I noticed right away when playing this is that four players kind of drags a bit in this game because there's a decent amount of thinking as you roll the dice, you're trying to figure out, usually you kind of know ahead of time, okay, I want, at, at first you just roll and see what happens. But after that, you look at where your cubes are and you're trying to get around those. So you're looking for the numbers you need. So you kind of say, okay, I'm gonna go for fives this turn. You don't roll fives, you maybe roll a bunch of threes. You're like, okay, how is a bunch of threes gonna, where's a good spot to put a square in a row with threes? So there is some thinking uh, involved and because of that, four players just like, oh, I just gotta wait for my turn. It's really at its best with two players because there's that back and forth. In fact, you can play with younger kids by going to a smaller section of the board and rolling fewer dice, or you can play a shorter game by you know, taking the number of cubes that you wanna use out of the game. I think the, the game itself is, is really interesting um, and, and I like it. It just seems like it would have been better as an iOS app or something like that because you would roll your dice right and then do 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 
all the spots where you can put it would show up on the board. You're like, oh, okay, uh, ooh, I wanna go over here. Okay, so I'll keep these dice and re-roll. Boop, boop, boop. Now this is where you can place it. It seems like that. Now, being, that being said, I do find the game interesting. I don't know what it is, but I find the look of this board just kind of mesmerizing. Ooh, all those spots to put cubes, you know? And I like the different point values. It's very numberish mathematical. But really it comes down to that Yahtzee die mechanism. Now I like Yahtzee to some degree, and I, rolling four times here gives you that much more chances to roll the combination you want. Um, the, the small straights and large straights are really kind of easy to roll, so those silver and gold spots get filled up. And there is some interaction, maybe you can block somebody else, but you're usually better off not blocking someone else, but just trying to build your own thing up. That's the way this kind of game works. So, is this game for you? Well, that depends on you watching. I mean, here I'm, I'm, have, I'm hard pressed to give a, like a definitive opinion on it. I enjoyed it. It was a, a, a decently fun game. Fewer players, better, of course. A little bit too much downtime. But other than that, I found it fun to try to figure it out. But I certainly know that this is not going to be in everybody's wheelhouse because there is a lot of looking at the board and figuring out where the numbers are. I might have made the the four, three, and two a little bit more obvious where the combinations are. And because the board kind of zigzags here, some combinations aren't available that you think would be available. And so you got to kind of look at it. I don't know. You'll find yourself staring at this a lot over the course of the game. Whether you like it or not, though, is really dependent on whether you just watched my review of it, the, the gameplay overview, and you said, huh, that's interesting. Well, then check it out. Otherwise, it's probably not your thing. I would say this is maybe for 50% of gamers. Now, I fall into that 50%, and I do have a good time trying it out. So if you're looking for something that's kind of like Yahtzee but has some tactical board placement, then get specs. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door, Tom. Yeah. Yeah.